We have discussed the Rogers adoption curve a few times on the show. You can check out episodes 24 and 31 for even more details. The adoption curve shows how new ideas, products, and strategies are incorporated into our world. Typically, it is only the innovators who immediately see the value in a new idea, but they only make up 2.5% of the population. This is part of the reason new ideas, products, and strategies can be quite slow to become accepted. More info can be found in the following episodes and in the two books mentioned, The Greenhouse Approach by Chitra Anand and The Myths of Innovation by Scott Birkin. The 20th century saw a dramatic change in the influence that the business sector has in our world. In some respects, they carry as much influence as entire nations. As their influence has increased, so too does the need for businesses to behave more ethically and more responsibly. When their influence was less prominent, businesses really only had to be concerned about profits. But the change in influence now requires that businesses update their models to include things like corporate social responsibility and sustainability. In episode 33, we explored the major roles in today's world. Here, we focus on how three of these entities provide check and balances for one another. All five roles we mentioned in the episode play vital roles in today's world, but in this case, we are presenting how journalists, as part of the role of information, are important to ensure businesses and governments behave legally, ethically, and responsibly. The role has become more difficult for journalists for three reasons. The first one, as seen in the picture, shows how businesses far outnumber the journalists. Then there's also the issues of the fall of journalism and info saturation. The fall of journalism is covered in episode 31. Basically, the internet increased the workload and decreased the compensation that journalists get, and journalism has been struggling ever since. We also briefly touched on information saturation. It might rhyme, but it's not exactly a great thing. It's probably not necessary to go into too much detail, but prior to the 1990s, the average person's access to information and communication was more restricted. That's not the case anymore. Here's a quick list. You got social media including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. You got YouTube, Netflix, and other streaming services, podcasts, Spotify, and other streaming services, video games. The internet also gave birth to the concept of binge watching on a much larger scale. People may have done that to some degree before, but now it has become far more common and mainstream. In episode 27, we mentioned the telephone game. The game many of you may have played as a child where you whisper a phrase down a line of people. Then by the time it gets to the end, the original phrase often has changed quite a bit. And the more people you add to the game, the more the original message is likely to change. In the field of sustainability, we are in a crisis. This is made evident by how we globally signed the Paris Agreement in 2016. Then earlier this year, the news outlet The Guardian changed the wording of climate change to match the escalation of the problem. They are now calling it a crisis. And just like in the telephone game, until the message has gone all the way down the line, then not everyone has heard the message. And humans are very social animals and we influence one another a lot. Until the message gets to the bottom here, the message isn't technically received. Here's another example of why this is. This is a visual representation of how our world is drowning in data and information. And this can be a good thing as well as a bad thing. Obviously, it's great that more people have access to info now more than ever, but conversely, it can become hard to distinguish between legitimate, reliable info and bad info. And in situations like these, where we are attempting to communicate a global crisis message, it gets lost in this saturation of information. In episode 6, we discussed a sustainability problem that was mostly corrected in the 20th century. The usage of lead that was added to products like fuel, children's toys, and plumbing. It took a long time, but it was eventually addressed. Our current sustainability problem will not be addressed fast enough due to the challenges we outline in the podcast. 
We can correct this, but not by doing the same things we have always done in the past. If we globally treat our systems as though it is one large business, then we can apply concepts from the field of business to help us change our current course. One such concept is Kurt Lewin's change process. In a business, the reasons for change are communicated using one single message from one single source to ensure the message is clear and effective. We can apply a modified version of this exact concept to repair our communication systems. The Viable Underdogs podcast was created to deliver this exact message. It's not as easy or simple as sending out a short email memo, but our podcast outlines exactly why this is. You can help by spreading this message. Share our podcast if you answer yes to the question we ask you in episode 36. In May 2019, The Guardian updated their wording to match the escalation of the problem by now calling it a climate crisis. It is currently September 2019, and most other news outlets globally still have not done the same. How many more months, or worse, years, will we have to wait?